Hello guys and welcome to The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which is a bit of an unusual game, but you might have heard of it. It definitely got some attention because it is a rather unique game in several ways. Um, saying that though, I don't know much about it because, you know, that's how I do these things. Uh, but it definitely grabbed my attention from what little I saw of it. And what I did saw was very, very pretty. <laughs> that too. And it is very narrative driven. And it's also kind of like a mystery puzzler. I'm not sure how to really describe it. But let's just dive in there. Yep, I did some test recording as per usual. Ethan Carter I didn't know, but he knew who I was. When the police won't help you and the priests don't believe you, you call on Paul Prospero. You call on me. If you're a kid like Ethan, you're right. Plenty do. Ethan's letter started out just like any other fan mail, but soon there were mentions of things no little boy should know about. There are places that exist that very few people can see. Ethan could have drawn a map. I hadn't entered Red Creek Valley yet, but already I could feel its darkness reaching out for me. Finding Ethan Carter wasn't going to be as easy as knocking on his door. I was too late for that. To find Ethan, I had to figure out what this place was trying to hide from me. And that's where he just lets you play and I th I love this intro basically just walking through a tunnel and then seeing this it's a good way to start a game if you ask me so as you can tell there's just not a lot happening UI wise <laughs> it's just uh, you know you're just the guy and you're walking around basically and there are as far as I know, there's just a couple of things I can do. One of which is crouch and sneak. I don't know if that is actually going to be a sneak or if just it's just there to... Uh, I don't know, like it, it sneaking would be the only way or crawling under something. But I've not encountered that yet in a couple of minutes I've played. And there's the running, which you uh, might have noticed me doing. Red Creek Valley seemed like a quiet, ordinary place. I've learned two things in my life. No place is truly quiet, and nowhere is really ordinary. Ethan warned me about that. Warned me not to be fooled by what I saw here. He didn't need to worry. I'd worked dozens of cases, hundreds. This would be my last one. I mean, just look at this. It's just a fantastic looking game, I think. But also, I have to say, quite a slow-paced one. Or maybe it just depends on the player, but... Uh, you just, yeah, don't really get any c sort of clue. It's blood, animal, human, accident, murder. This is actually one I missed initially. So it's like a cran crankshaft, fresh scratches, recently used. And then it does this, which is one of its kind of main gameplay features is you have to look in the direction where it is and that's all you get to find whatever the the subject is so the crank is over there somewhere it seems to be there and then I have to hold left mouse and we kind of get to see where it is so it's near some water where you can, yeah, it's basically at the water of the of the river, uh, lake. It's not a river, and you can enter, which in this case I'm not going to because I know for a fact that we'll be doing that soon.
But it's just very pleasant to walk around this. Here's another thing. So let's inspect it. Got ties. Untied and tied. There's no blood. Uh, so there's rope. And things went awry here. That's for sure. The rest of the corpse. Where is it? Well, probably <laughs> follow the blood trail, yeah. Dragged away or crawled away. Severed legs. So basically you try and figure things out as you see them. Well, we found the guy. Blood from, well, probably his legs, right? And a fractured skull as well. And we can touch him. And as far as I figured out, this holding it, like there is a mystery. Yeah, not yet. That scene, disturbed by third party, eroded by time. So we have to basically restore the death scene. Or, you know, maybe the later ones are not going to be death scenes, but moments in time. And then we can basically see what has happened in the past. And somehow that will probably lead to finding Ethan, which seems to be the goal. Uh, the crank should be here somewhere, shouldn't it? I was like, yeah, I think this was the view we had when viewing the crank. But see, now there's... Ah, there it is. Yep. That's definitely been... Bloodied. So let's take that. But yeah, like, other than just this general direction indication of where this item might be... It doesn't give you anything. So it definitely doesn't hold, a, hold hold your hand like other games would. Which it also mentioned in the very beginning, of course. So let's get back to the train cart. And still showing like the rope, you know, the severed legs. But boy, is this a looker. <laughs> and a crank. Fix it. Now we tap. Get this engine going, hopefully. So we probably ought to get this back near the corpse somewhere. bunch of dry grass there, or a bunch of orange, so I assume that is kind of... Oh yeah, it definitely has momentum. Guess it should be here somewhere. Probably good enough, right? Maybe we should turn the engine off, but... I don't know what that sound is. Gasoline? Diesel fuel? Props on purpose? Good question. So is this what needed to be done? Yeah, it gets bigger. But not yet, apparently. Okay, so. What else could there be? There's nothing directly around here. What does that sign say? Do not enter. Wait, that looks... Yeah, like something. It's a rock. Rock, 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 divot, fresh dirt. So, okay, someone was... He probably was got his head trauma from being hit by a rock then, I assume. So it should be here somewhere, next to a tree stump. 
Yes. Yep, definitely seems to be part of it. Well, then we should probably take it back, right? So it made another one of those sounds. Is this going to be enough? From this point on, I, I've actually not. This is what I did in my test recording. So I'm. Yeah, maybe I'm doing this a little bit quick, but. Uh, it only took me a couple of minutes anyway, so. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Uh, if this is enough or not, I don't know. And I also don't know what's going to happen, so. <laughs> let's see. There is something happening. Mm. So there are a couple of lights. So he was kind of Taking cover there. And he had tied someone up there? Why would he do that? Oh. Maybe I'm. I probably did the wrong thing. Should have looked at the rock instead. Sorry, guy. I'll go back. Oh. So that's the guy. Wait, so what is the order of events here? Because first he was here. What would happen here then? The gas can. I don't to fuel it. So they were working together. Hmm. This is probably where they. Chronology. One. How am I supposed to pick? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Thinking hat should be on. So he gets... But it didn't give me... Yeah, okay. So... There's a... So he gets a rock. Goes here. Gets beaten down. Ties... Yeah, he tells this guy to bind the kid, then hits him on the head here. Kid, yeah, drives over with that, I guess. And then they drag him here, I guess. Yeah, one question mark, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, I'm just supposed to, okay, yeah. Well, let's put this as last. <laughs> Did it override the six? No. So it's like one. Two. And I'm going to say that is three. Though it doesn't really make sense. And this should be four. Visualize with space. Okay. I wonder if it does this if you're wrong. 